Uh, so, Louis, perhaps like you, many of our listeners, and this would be women and men as well, they might be hesitant to go there, mm. to revisit painful parts of their past, of their story, uh, especially things from childhood that it feels like, man, it's so long ago. Why revisit that hard, painful stuff? So what kind of encouragement or wisdom would you share about why this is so necessary to healing and recovery? It is so hard to turn and face the pain. I, there's an analogy. I think it's in Seven Pillars of a man who has a nightmare mm. and he's constantly outrunning darkness. Mm -hmm. And then he finally shares his nightmare with his sister and his sister says, well, stop running. Turn and face it. Attack it head on. Mm -hmm. I really identified with that. And um, I was reluctant. I was reluctant to tell my story to just Dr. Ted and Lori and then read it an explanation to each one of our married siblings or, and uh, married kids and their siblings. But it is so worth it mm -hmm. to finally come to terms with the pain that we've stuffed for so many years and um, there's just no easy way to do it you know um, and I, I suspect you guys have experienced this too but as I've led groups I've been in groups with some of the same men for multiple years mm -hmm. and it seems like anything around molestation or sex abuse is the very very last thing to come out uh, even in my own life, I, it was one of those things. I had a, an incident with an older cousin when I was six and it took me five years in group before I let that out just because I'm like, well, that doesn't really matter. Ah, no one needs to know that one thing. Right. Um, but you know, Nick, you always bring up the gift of going first. Uh, and it seems like for those of us that have experienced that in our sharing it, uh, one of the benefits as a leader is it gives permission to other people to share yeah. what mm -hmm. took place in their lives. When I went through my sex abuse, I was 17 years old. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I don't remember a lot of it because I was drunk. Mm -hmm. I was in the wrong place at the wrong time with, with some wrong people. Mm -hmm. And so for years, you know, I met Lori just four months after I, mm. I went through that. Yeah. And so, you know, I grabbed onto Lori for, with everything I had because I honestly thought I was gay. Mm -hmm. And, and I wrestled with that yeah. uh, for a long time. And, um, you know, I don't know where I'd be right now. I'd probably be dead if it weren't for Lori, mm -hmm. you know, dealing with all of this stuff, but God yeah. just orchestrated everything. Um, so yeah, there's, there's this deep seated fear that our story will make us less than, and I'm finding out that by sharing my story mm -hmm. to safe people, um, it actually helps them. Yes. Yeah. And when I shared in my seven pillars group uh, through sobs and, and just trying to talk, mm -hmm they reaffirm me mm -hmm. and it, it, it was opposite of what I thought they were right. going to, how they were going to react. Yeah. So, um, that's the beauty of group is, uh, I remember the very first group I went to the, the leader says, okay, here's what's going to happen. Everybody in, in the room is going to tell you their story and then you're going to share yours. And I remember thinking, okay, just take all the emotion out of it and just do this thing. And as I, as they went around the table, I'm like, I identify with a piece of your story and a piece of your story and a piece of your story and a piece of your story. And I'm like, these guys just gave me the nuke button to their life, which <laughs> is my fear, right? Right. I'm going to tell my story and someone's going to share it with somebody. And, uh, I just want to tell you, thank you for letting your story be, uh, shared in the compassionate warrior. Thank you. Um, it's just such a, um, such a beautiful thing, uh, that you allowed us to do that.